Glenn McGroggy, and I am interviewing the holdouts tonight. And uh, with uh, we have everybody here tonight, so introduce yourselves and uh, tell what you do in the band. Yeah. Uh, my name is Rick Iafredi. I sing. Um, I'm non-binary. Not that it uh, super matters, but I figured I'd get that out of the way. Let you know who these lyrics are actually coming from. I'm Jer Liberty. I play guitar, sing backups. And yeah, I'm in my kitchen. <laughs> uh, I'm Derek. I play bass. Kind of. Um, <laughs> I have a bass. <laughs> uh, I, I'm Matt Perron and I play drums. <laughs> um, how'd you guys get together? Uh, Derek and I were in a band previously uh, that ended, and when it ended, him and I just wanted to keep going. We play really well together. We write a lot of good music together, a uh, good dynamic. So him and I just started jamming songs, just bass and guitar, and the ever constant search for a good drummer. And Derek knew Matt, so the three of us hooked up and went through a rotating, rotating uh, a bunch of singers. Uh, one guy we nicknamed Dubes because that he showed up and he said, "You guys got any Dubes? Got any Dubes?" So uh, he lasted about all of an hour. Um, if there's anything wrong with Dubes. <laughs> yeah. And then we uh, we hooked up with Rick, and it's been honestly a, a, a fucking going concern since the first time Rick came out. It's been just nonstop progress. It's the four of us work really, really well together. We've got a great dynamic. Um, I've been playing in bands since I was 16. I'm 43 now. And I have never had a group of guys that I like playing with more than these guys. Um, so who writes, uh, who does, who does what in the band? Like in terms of writing, uh, is it one person brings in more? brings in like a riff or something and everybody builds off it or well sometimes uh, Jared decides to write down uh, five songs in advance <laughs> and then he brings them to jam <laughs> and he goes here rick put some lyrics on this um, yeah. and sometimes i'll write a, a a little riff and i'll throw it to Jared or something like that or you know kind of vice all our stuff starts off as riffs just rick and i will we'll throw riffs back and forth like um the other night rick sent me three riffs and he's just like hey make songs out of these or like he said, I work from home, so I'll just be sitting on conference calls with my guitar muted and I'll show up at practice and say, Hey, here's four songs. <laughs> so, uh, and then we'll just show up with just a basic riff and then the four of us will just write songs around it. So very much all songs written by the holdouts. It's never one guy taking credit for anything. Uh, Rick usually writes all the lyrics, he said. Yes for the new stuff right the first one that we put out that's on spotify i think the f what is it five songs four were with you guys and then one was when i entered the band yeah pretty much um, yeah. yeah um and then now um yeah i've written most of them or sometimes you would send me something jerry and i've like reworked it and, yeah, and yeah, threw yeah. it into something um, if i get in a mood i'll send him a paragraph or two of ranting and say put it a song and one of the songs that's off the new one was was written by you because we did a kind of a redo of one of the songs off the last record standard light nonsense and that's a that's a jr tune that is a jr tune yeah and um rick you you also play guitar yeah yeah you don't play guitar in the band though you're still a singer no i'm free i can run wherever i want um is that, uh, why is that <laughs> mainly uh um i like the freedom uh i like being able to really kind of push my vocals as far as i can go um and i think uh, holding the guitar being stuck to a mic stand kind of hinders me in that regard sometimes um in my last band i played guitar and sang and played harmonica all kind of in tandem mm -hmm. switching back and forth and uh it's sometimes more of a hassle than what it was worth um and i'm at a point right now where i just got way too much to say um so put me in front of a mic okay um so what are you usually uh writing songs about yeah. uh, it can be pretty much anything uh for this record it goes uh, anywhere from mental illness to uh me having a big issue with god if it exists uh to um i wrote one that's kind of about uh about being non-binary i wrote 
I don't know. What else we got, guys? What's on this record? Blanket <laughs> statements about assholes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one song, very heartfelt, and then five songs, Rick yelling at things. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so very impassioned. <laughs> cool. Uh, you mentioned a couple of previous bands. Uh, what bands all have you played in? Um, um, do you want to start, Jared and I. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Jared and I were previously in a band called Dead to Rights. Okay. Um, that's it for me, other than the holdouts. Okay. Um, I was in Dead to Rights with Derek. I was in a band called uh, Failing Grade, a lot of hardcore band. Before that was Legendary Clopex, uh, going back to a band called Dead at Recess when I was 18. Okay. Matty? Uh, I don't know, man. I played in a bunch of cover bands all over the place. Uh, most notably in the Niagara region, though, is probably uh, played with a funk band called the Amazing Flying Hammer Brothers for a long time. Oh, yeah. And then uh, me, I um, I played in a psychobilly band called the uh, called Chainsaw Lobotomy. Um, we were kind of outside the genre, I feel. We didn't have an upright bass. We were uh, a lot faster than most of those bands. And, uh, and you were good. A little yeah. different. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, the holdouts. Where are you holding out for? <laughs> you know, I don't even know. <laughs> when I came up with the name, it just seemed like something cool. Like, I it, it was going to be a punk band, so I wanted it to be the somethings. <laughs> okay. And just the holdouts just seemed cool. All right, fair enough. Uh, you want to tell us about your new release? Rick, take it. Well, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> so we are putting out a, uh, a six song EP, uh, called for reasons unknown, um, features a picture from uh, Ruby Ridge on the cover. That was a uh, Jer's pick. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a real banger start to finish. I don't think it really has any lulls in it. I mean, not that you can in six songs, but, uh, <laughs> but enjoy driving to it. That's all I can say. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's, it's, I definitely enjoyed the drive, driving and listening to it. It's, it's like front to back. Like I, there's really no more like both the bands I've been like I haven't been more proud of anything than these six songs. Uh, super stoked on how everything turned out. Uh, like huge shout out to Marco at Dead Quarters uh, and uh, was it Azimuth, Azareth, Azimuth Brick Mastering who mastered it. Yeah. Yep. Um, made it sound absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I super stoked on it. I can't wait to get it out and have people actually hear the whole thing. Yeah. To all the, uh, the, uh, you know, up and coming bands that want a really good sounding records, go check out dead quarters, you know, when you can. <laughs> it was, it was interesting with COVID uh, not being able to play shows because we could just focus yeah. on writing and perfecting it. And there was nothing really sidetracking us. Like we were still jamming like every week okay. um, before there was obviously a state of emergency <laughs> jamming every week and just getting these songs. No, for no perfect. Um, we rented just rehearsal space at the warehouse here in St. Catharines and demoed it, rented like a three hour block and demoed the record just so we could have it to give to the studio when we recorded it saying, this is what we want to sound like. Um, give us your feedback, help us produce it. So it was, it was interesting not having to worry about anything, but writing a record. Do you think that that, that helped with uh, how it turned out? Or? It helped focus us a lot. Just, it was the only thing we had to do. Right. Okay. Rick's work has been on and off. Uh, Matt's a trucker. Derek works from home. Um, I work from home and a little bit from work. So besides, like, we just had the record. That's what we focused on. I think it's been a really nice focus point for me to come back to when I feel like I'm slipping in any way, shape or form in terms of like feeling like I'm not progressing in some way. I always come back to music. I always write something down or, you know, make a riff or jot. I always jot lyrics down on my phone because it's easy. Um, you know, as soon as you think about it before that just disappears and evaporates like it always does. Um, yeah. Um, so tell me what is so great about cassettes? 
you now have uh, two releases on cassette. Uh, did you grow up with cassettes or what? It's, I personally love cassettes. I still have a ton of them. I've got all the old Bad Religion records, um, original released on cassette. Like my car I doesn't would, even have a cassette player. I still have all the <laughs> old like Welland band tapes, like the hardcore bands, TV free freaks from Hamilton. I have all these tapes in my car. Um, we just want like if it comes with a download serv uh, download card and if it's on Spotify, who gives a fuck? The tape is a keepsake as far as I'm concerned, and it's the cheapest, coolest keepsake that we could find. You know. I like yeah, it for the it's, it's it's simple. Like, it, I mean, more people nowadays have more people have tape decks than they do CD players. Yep, that's true. <laughs> like tapes and vinyl are pretty much where where it's at right now for pressing physical music they're what's selling more so yeah you're not, me, you're not collecting I, files on your hard drive you want to collect something yeah. you can look at yeah. yeah for me it's a nostalgia thing like i was born in 77 so when i was coming up i just missed the vinyl like i think i had like three records and then when i was nine and ten starting really really to get into music it was just tapes like yeah. you go to a a records and tapes in the mall or you go to atlantic or sam the record man like there was just walls and walls of cassettes and i think at one point i had like 150 160 cassettes and i still have some of the original ones i bought so it's it's a nostalgia thing like all the bands i grew up listening to that inspired me I still have their stuff on cassette and that's how I heard them. That's how I discovered punk rock was on cassette. Just like guys handing stuff to me in class being like, dude, check this out. Like, <laughs> I still have the original yeah. Forgotten Rebels dub that I got in grade seven written to my mom's calligraphy pen because I had nothing else to use. So <laughs> it's a nostalgia thing. Like mm. having just racks of cassettes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's kind of like me. Like when I, uh, when I was in high school and stuff, we couldn't, really afford all the punk records so one one person out of our group of friends would buy buy the record yep. yeah but would tape it that's it exactly tape it for everybody like i have the mdc millions of cops that was my first punk record to buy and so that made the rounds and somebody else had dealing with it by dri so that made the rounds somebody else had deep wound seven inch and God, Deep Wound is so good. I know. <laughs> I'm so happy somebody else in this world knows who Deep Wound is. <laughs> so good. Um, yeah, so that's that's how I got into cassettes and just, you know, kept holding on to them and, and whatnot. And people would just put, like, different crazy stuff on tape for you. And here, check this out. So, mm -hmm. so you have, sort of have a culture of that, too, as well, I guess. And it was, it was a way to make your, your vinyl portable as well. Like for the vinyl guys, like you can't take your records with you and go on the subway or go on the bus or walk to work. Like you got to walk me. Yes. I wish there was an alternate history or alternate future where people have vinyl <laughs> <laughs> walk <laughs> carrying them down the street. Yes. They, put I, on I they actually used to have stuff like that back in yeah. the uh, 40s <laughs> and 50s. Maybe. Um, oh, when they're, when they're figuring it out still. <laughs> What is well, this? They, would, they would have a portable record player that you could take on a picnic or something. My first record player was actually a little blue one that ran on batteries, and you mm -hmm. lifted the lid and you had your record, and you could take carry like a suitcase. There you go, <laughs> just like that. Okay, um, you guys haven't been together for a long time as um, as the holdouts, have you? It's been two years. Two years, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, how many shows have you played in that time? Ten ish. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, this last year kind of kicked us in the ass on that one. But uh, did you uh, have any tours planned or anything like that before uh, all this? We had three or four shows booked in 2020 um, yeah. because we played our last show February 2020. Mm -hmm. um, we had a show pretty much booked March, April, May, June, okay. and we were going to start thinking about a short tour for the summer when everything yeah we had a show playing with doa in october i think it was there is, it was originally it was supposed to be the week before i left for la mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um do you want to tell us about the most memorable show that you've played and it can be good or bad <laughs> <laughs> I don't know for us. I, uh, me personally, 
uh, I really liked uh, playing Warehouse uh, every time that we've played. It's a great venue. We love it. It's That's basically the best venue in St. Catharines. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The main place to play. Um, aside from that, um, oh man, I just had oh the Walmore. We played the Walmore in in uh, in Buffalo. That was a really good time. We that was an amazing awesome time. There. Yeah. That was what used using other people's yeah. instruments and smuggling my guitar over the border. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was a good yeah, one. Pretty, solid, pretty solid show, pretty solid venue. Yeah. So, well, so how'd you get across the border? Did you just go as like tourists or whatever? Or? Yeah, we were going to see a friend's band. Oh, okay. Yeah. And just, cool. I just threw my guitar in the trunk, and if they said, what's in the trunk, I'd be like, oh, my guitar's in there. I forgot. <laughs> uh, for me, most memorable show would probably be the last one we played uh, at the warehouse with the anti-queens. Well, the crowd was huge. It was super receptive. Um, That's a fun one. Like every person who knew us came out. So like, oh, the whole place was packed. Like from the back, everybody was there. Everybody knew our stuff. Everybody was singing along. All our friends was there. It was, if we had to have played a last show before COVID, that was the show yeah. Fit. Like we were all cocky and arrogant as fuck on stage <laughs> and the crowd was eating it up and it was just, it was a great show. Everybody yeah. cheered. The anti Queens were phenomenal. Um, foolproof opened the show. They yeah. were good. It was just, it was the good show. Yeah. And like, I go like not way back, but a decent amount back with Val from the anti Queens. Cause she used to play in black cat attack. And my old band used to tour with she them. She still does, doesn't she? Technically, yes. I think they're playing again. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah. So any for me um, from Chainsaw to now uh, shows was always my way of uh, making some of my best friends. To be honest, um, linking up and trading shows across uh, different cities and stuff like that. So I can't wait to get back to that. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite my favorite show that I, that we played was with uh iron Sheik, just because we played with iron Sheik, it was awesome <laughs> um that was warehouse too yeah those was, was warehouse they're just they're a great bunch of guys and just probably one of the best bands going at the moment in my opinion so being able to play with them was awesome that was our second show so that was even better that was <laughs> Actually, the bar we played our first show at closed recently. It did. Yeah. Oh. The Blue yeah. Lagoon. Yes. Pour, pour one out for the Blue Lagoon. <laughs> I think uh, I think a lot of places are going that way. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately. Here in Barrie, the Fox is closed. But yeah. I, I'm sure they will start up again. Um, I know Shane and, you know, all the equipment that was in there is, is his, basically, anyway. Oh, yeah. So. He, uh, they actually closed up right at the beginning, so they got they didn't lose too much money, so that was good for them. Well, a lot of people, I, I could see them doing that for financial. It's just like, I'm not even going to yeah. bother to fight. I'm just going to close it up when it's all done and yeah. open back up again. Yeah. Might as well. They're not worrying about rent or any trying to keep it the float. Yep. Cool. Um, so... Okay, so you guys have been doing okay during the pandemic. You've been able to write. You've obviously recorded, um, and you're all working. So that's that's good, I guess. Unless I just got laid work. off, but <laughs> <laughs> you're all working. That's awesome. Sorry, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's good for Rick. Yeah, maybe uh, it's good for the band. That's that's for sure. More time to write well, now. For now, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're just like waiting for the the state of emergency to stop so we can just start jamming again. Get together again. Eh? Like the next EP is two thirds written. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So. And you're you're going to be releasing another EP and not going like full length wise. Or... I like EPs because you can do a cassette easy. You can do if we wanted to, we could do a ten inch because our songs are really fucking quick. Mm -hmm. um, and you can put out music more more frequently rather than if we're doing a full length like, and if you do a full length you got 10 songs you're going to have one or two that are filler mm -hmm. you do an EP you've got six strong like when we recorded our first EP 
we kept one song back and then we recorded the second EP. We did that again. We kept a song back. So hit the ground running. We've already got a new song to start off the next record with. Okay. And I like EPs personally, like you can get through it quickly. Listen to a whole EP on the drive to work. I think it keeps it a little more free too. Um, for me, I'm really into themes when I'm writing. And if we're going to write songs and make a full record, normally I want them all to kind of jive together. I think it's easier to do that with five or six songs than it is to do with 10 and have them all hit that same kind of, you know, point without beating a dead horse. Um, so I like it. So what's the particular theme with this one? Um, well, see, that's the thing. We titled it for reasons unknown. So it's really up to you. Um, yeah, I would say it has a theme for me. Um, but I'm not the type of person to want to just give you that and then let you only think of that. I would rather you just listen to the record and take what you want from it and apply it to your own life. The theme for me was Rick can write the lyrics. <laughs> so I can focus more on just writing guitar parts. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, if they want to check you out, um, you have videos out. What, uh, what have you got for people to see, to learn about you? What's out there? Yeah, Derek, you it's got? your wheelhouse. It is. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, if anybody needs to get a hold of us, um, they can all get a hold of us through our Facebook, which is just facebook.com slash the holdouts905. Um, same with our Instagram. Uh, just at the underscore holdouts underscore nine oh five. Uh, any messages that people send uh, they could come straight through and I answer immediately unless it's something I have to run by everybody and then I just kind of go through there. Um, yeah, all of our contact information is pretty much all over our social media stuff. Um, so there's direct messages, we've got there's email. Yeah. In terms of uh, uh, finding our stuff, you can find us on all major streaming platforms for sure. Um, you can uh, cause and effects already up there. Our first EP and uh, second one's on the way February 8th, I believe. Yes. Okay. Um, That's through tarantula tapes. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Through tarantula yep. tapes. And, and we're, we're uh, super psyched to be hooked up with you guys. Like it's awesome. I, like the roster's good. We've already been in contact with a couple of the label mates. So we're, we're super stoked. Yeah. Casey and Corey do a great job. I would just like to say, um, I'm I'm not really part of it, but uh, they yeah. they get me to do all the interviews. That's great. But uh, yeah, because apparently I used to do this sort of thing. What kind of? <laughs> apparently, I'm experienced. Um, but uh, yeah, they do a great job with um, the look of the tapes and everything. I, yeah, that was the one really, that I was super stoked. I'm really on. impressed um, with what they do. They, they when when we were in contact originally, and they were just they sent everything through with what they with how they were running things and how they wanted to get everything set up and uh, getting everything set up with the artwork and uh, it's it's been an awesome experience so far. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, no, I'm super happy that uh, they reached out when uh, we posted about the new EP. So, yeah, I'm um, uh, stoked to see how the tapes actually uh, actually come out. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys have T-shirts and stuff for sale? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, stuff on our Bandcamp. Okay. Uh, it's the holdouts 905bandcampcom Okay. And uh, people we've got can our mail tapes. order that? Pardon? People can order that through the mail, or, or you'll yep. send stuff out to them through the mail? Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a merch section on there so they can order the shirts, tapes. Um, we can just buy a digital download if you want to. Um, anything, anything goes, it's all up there. So, However you want to support. <laughs> Get it sent out as quickly as possible. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and you just did a new video, I'm told. You want to tell us about that? Um, yeah, we just we're kind of, uh, we're, Wanted to do kind of just a, like a lyric video, just to get something out. Um, okay. Instead of just kind of, hey guys, here's a song. Um, here's you know something to go along with it. Um, kind of had a, a few different ideas. Um, 
I just, I made it on my phone. So that was, we really <laughs> put a lot of time and effort into it. Uh, I had one that was kind of a medley of pictures. I didn't really like how that one was turning out. Uh, and I was just driving around one night and uh, I decided to just kind of turn my phone to its side on its little uh, window holder there and uh, just hit record and drove around for a few minutes. And then through the best that. parts of town, I might add, oh, it's all the classiest of parts of St. Catherine. <laughs> I'm not going to go through a nice part of town. I'm going to drive through Crackton. Uh, I live so in Crackton. Just, just like sped it up to twice the speed and put the music to it and then just synced up the lyrics. It's how we like to experience the songs. So I figure <laughs> we'll give it to you that way as well. So, is that up there now? Yeah, it's it's, it's uh, live on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's uh, if you look, just search, do a quick search for uh, the holdouts. The song's called "Blanket Statement." Okay. Um, we have a link to it uh, on our Facebook as well, um, as well as uh, on our Instagram page. Uh, there's a, a link in the bio directly to the video. Awesome. Okay, well, uh, thank you for uh, answering my questions, and uh, hopefully everybody will check out the new uh, EP and uh, check out your videos and stuff. Awesome. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you.